Do you find yourself struggling because you don't know what to do when all the pressure is on you? Do you have to solve the problems alone and by yourself? Well, my guest today is going to help shine a light in the dark. How is tough it- did it get? How dark did it get? And I would lay down in the night and I would feel like someone was sitting on my chest and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't take a full breath. I had a bronchoscopy, which was horrible. You know, you're awake and they stick in a tube camera down into your lungs. I wasn't sleeping. I was I had pills lined up. You're, you're doing it on your own. Well, my guest today is going to help shine a light in the dark. He's an experienced businessman who's been in your shoes and come out the other side. You're going to love today's episode. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. I'm so glad you joined in again. Today, we've got a very special guest joining us. And as you know, we've been in the middle of this season called What to Do When It's All on You. Today's guest is going to give us some great stories and insights for what that's like as a business owner, a startup guy, and someone who's been through many transitions in his career. My guest's name today is Jonathan Peacock, and uh, he's going to talk to us about his story. I know you're going to love that. So let's welcome him. Thanks, Jono, for joining us on the show today. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I want to dive right in and uh, get you to give us a little bit of a start for the viewers and listeners based on uh, your family upbringing and then how that may be tied into your bent, as it were, towards entrepreneurship, starting businesses, all that kind of thing. Talk to us about that for a moment to begin with. Yeah, well, I guess to frame this up initially, I've only ever had a full-time job uh, for one year of my whole life. Right. Um, so I have been an entrepreneur or entrepreneurial mindset, you know, since the very start of my working life. Okay. Uh, look, I, I don't know where it all came from, to be honest, like my my parents aren't business owners. Um, my, on my mum's side, which is Chinese, you know, all her brothers are all own their own business. Uh, maybe it's baked into my genetics in some sh- way, shape, or form. I don't know. Yep. Uh, but I, th- I do really think it came from just being around, you know, a lot of older guys that were into business okay. uh, in my sort of formative years, I guess. And so just sort of chatting with them and wealth creation in general right. was something that I was quite interested in. Uh, and, you know, I remember buying books on investing in real estate or stocks or trading the Forex markets and things like that. And I think business for me was just like a natural thing to move into because okay. it felt more accessible. Um, where I feel like obviously you need some working capital in order to do those other things to generate an income from that, sure. from investing. So. Business felt more accessible, so I sort of just naturally landed in it from there. Right. And I'm going to make the presumption that when you first started out back then, you probably slash possibly had very little idea or or no idea some of the challenges and and difficult spots that were going to come your way. Would that be fair? Yeah, that's fair. I think uh, being an entrepreneur, that's um, naivety is uh, probably one of the the strengths of young entrepreneurs is that you don't know how hard the journey is. Right. Uh, as a 38 year old now, uh, I would obviously do a lot of things differently. Mm. Um, but also, you know, you got to sort of go through the trial by fire, I guess, to learn those yes. hard lessons uh, along the way as well. So, you know, I wouldn't be the entrepreneur that I am today if I didn't go through those struggles right. in the first place. But yeah. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, and look, maybe for, for you and for me and for many others, if we knew all of what was coming before we started, we, we may never have started, right? So, uh, look, exactly I, I, right. <laughs> I know that you've had, um, you know, several chapters, as it were, in your career, different businesses and different contexts and opportunities. Could you give us a little bit of that backstory? Tell us briefly about the different businesses, what type they were, what it was like working in those environments, especially as it pertains to this subject that we've been on about being the guy, the person with the pressure all on you. Yeah, sure. Look, I'll take you through a pretty quick overview of my background in Mm -hmm. general. So I got my start in business really early. Um, Probably I'd say around 20 years old was when my first real business that I launched was. Okay, Uh, That was an e-commerce company, um, just found a product that people were wanting to buy at the time Mm -hmm. uh, and set up a website and just started selling and I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, But in that first 12 months, I did half a million dollars in in, um, revenue. And what year was this? Um, I was 20. I'm 38 now. I have no idea. What so was around 05 2005. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, look, it's been a long time. And so that was my first foray into business. Um, you know, I learned how to manage customers mm-hmm. and do some marketing and things like that. Yep. But it was really, um, really high-level stuff. 
I think from there, that business, you know, quickly, it was kind of like a, a, a bit of a trendy sort of narrative that was going on. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like capturing that. Right. Uh, but then it didn't really go further than that after that first year. I then sort of, you know, started getting into another business, uh, which was in the really early stages. At the time when I started that first e-commerce business, I was still studying. Yep. Uh, so I studied to become a high school PE teacher. That was my okay. uh, where I got my start. And so after uni, once I finished that business, I just went into casual teaching. Um, and so I did that actually for five years. But while I was casual teaching, I was building another business. Right. Uh, so that business was probably the longest business that I've done. Uh, so that was, you know, a 12 plus year journey building wow. that business. But the first five years was really doing it on the, as a side hustle, trying to generate okay. enough revenue. My big dream back then was how can I do business full time? Mm. All I wanted to do in life was do business full time. Okay. And I'm now doing that. Yeah. I'm 10 years on working for myself uh, in a full time capacity. Can you take so us I'm into kind of living that, that part of it? 20 year old dream. Sorry to cut in on you. Can you can you take us into that part a bit deeper for us? I, I know that there's other chapters that are part of the, the career history, but I'm really curious uh, on behalf of the viewers and listeners that moment where you talked about still working, still studying trying to do the business, trying to straddle across from an income source to a preferred career, that must have been a lot of pressure. That must have been a lot of uh, long days, late nights. Um, talk to us about that for a moment. How hard was that? Yeah, that's right. Look, I was, so I was casual teaching. So I had school holidays. Right. You know, I had a lot of downtime during the day. 3.30 p.m., I was pushing the kids out of the way to get to my car to get, <laughs> get home and start working again. You know, so I had some time it's not like I had no time I still had the time to do the side hustle and but you know definitely holding that dream in my heart of wanting to just break out and do this full time but not really knowing exactly Mm. how to do that you know I lacked a lot of a lot of skills uh back then that I didn't know that I lacked necessarily but I just felt like I was hitting that brick wall all the time you know Mm. kind of just getting it to the point where I was making a little bit of money but but not enough right. uh, to do it in a full-time capacity. So it was hard. Like, I mean, I'm young, naive, <laughs> but it's still, you still have a dream in your sure. heart when you're young. And it, it yes, yeah, there's definitely days that it felt really, really hard. Right. Um, and, you know, I ended up um, after that five years of teaching, and like I said, all I wanted to do was do business full time. Mm. I decided to take myself out of teaching okay. and start getting into like the startup industry. Yes. Um, and that was probably, if I look back, probably one of the best moves that I ever made, right. uh, across my entrepreneurial journey. Um, and so the, the company that I joined was called Polonizer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Polonizer, their, their whole business model was just to literally build startup companies. Right. So they would put a small team around it. You would get investors. Uh, and then you would try to grow this company and eventually get it acquired. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Polonizer's biggest success story was a company called Spreets, which sold to Yahoo for forty million dollars. Okay. Um, and Polonizer was run by these two guys, Mick Labinskas and Phil Moore. And back then, they were like really, you know, pioneering the you know Australian startup scene. Yes. So it was it was really good to be around those guys. Right. So I started in um, as a product manager. You know, I eventually became the CEO of one of the portfolio companies uh, and that company, uh, you know, we raised a bunch of money from investors, you know, some of the biggest VCs in Australia. We had TV personalities like David Koch Mm -hmm. involved as well. Um, So it was a really good experience for me because I learned how to, you know, learn new skills. I made great connections. I learned how to manage a board, for example. Okay. Um, But the biggest thing for me is that it was validating uh, for who I was as an entrepreneur. Right. Uh, I feel like when I was siloed and teaching and still r- trying to run this business and, you know, not really knowing what I was lacking, it was just this hard journey of just you don't know what you don't know. Right. And going into Polonizer and having to, you know, you know, do business mm-hmm. at a different level with board and, you know, uh, accountability yes. and things like that. We had to do weekly progress updates. Right. 
it just leveled me up. Okay. Uh, and I also got that validation from people like Phil and Mick, which made me feel like, oh, I do kind of know what I'm doing. Talk to well. us about that for a moment, yeah. because I think I know what you mean by validation and how crucial it is. But give us your perspective. What do you specifically mean by validation? And how does that apply to people who are in this space and perhaps not quite as far on their journey as where you are now? Yeah, well, I, I guess if you view uh, Mick and Phil was kind of like, um, I don't know, like like a coach to me, okay. you know, somewhat like a mentor mm -hmm. almost. And those guys have walked the journey. They've got so much more experience than me. Yep. And so coming under that kind of leadership, I guess it just, as a young person, it just made me, yeah, feel more confident. Right. And, and they just gave validating um, words of affirmation to me, okay. which made me feel good awesome. you know uh and that just that just boosted me up as a as a entrepreneur and made me actually think all right i think i've got what it takes to you know do do business gotcha and and that was a huge uh, huge moment mm. for me yeah wow amazing yeah. and so then you you went from that zone of, of pollenizer and w where did that take your career in its next chapter and, and where has that got your position now mm. Yeah, so Pollenizer was a one-year journey. So that was my one year of full-time work that I've only ever done in my life. Okay. Uh, and around the end of that year, Zibit, my um, company that I was running while I was teaching, it started making enough money uh, to pay me full-time, mm. you know, just a, a modest $75,000 a year salary. Right. Uh, but that was enough to for me to take the leap to do that dream. Mm -hmm. So I had an office in the basement of Polonizer, Mick and Phil let me use the basement. Um, and, you know, I sort of bumbled along there. And, you know, we, what was really great about Polonizer is being around other people. Right. Uh, and I think that that was a huge thing. So once Polonizer actually moved out of their office, mm -hmm. we actually set up a co working space called Hacker Labs in Surrey Hills. Okay. And the reason that we ended up setting that up was just to be around other entrepreneurs, yes. you know, other people. And and I think that when you're doing things and you're just on your own, mm -hmm. it just feels a lot harder. It's a, it's a lonely journey. Right. But when you're around other people, it's just, it feels so much better. And so mm. I, I recognized that, you know, fairly early on yes. and wanted to make sure I had a co-working space. And so that was great. And then I guess while I was doing Zibert, I was obviously earning only 75000 a year. It wasn't a huge amount, but it was enough to get by. But I was doing odd things here and there on the side. So Polonizer started working with Google uh, and they brought me in to start running growth workshops, yep. which again was another really good experience because the biggest companies in Australia were coming in, uh, all the execs sitting down, listening to me at the front, teaching them, you know, about their their funnels okay. and where they're leaking customers out right. of their funnel wow. and how could they potentially patch those funnels um, and, and running like a sort of intensive workshop mm -hmm. around that. And that was good, paid well, again, felt validated, yes. you know, that I'm in that sort of around bigger people yep. and I had to level up in order to, to do that. Um, you know, I, I dabbled in another side business um, which was, you know, the first software as a service uh, metrics platform around uh, for people to track their revenue better. Mm -hmm. I ended up selling that to a company called ProfitWell um, and I joined their advisory board. Yep. That recently sold for $200 million. Right. Um, and I don't know. And then I guess from there, Zibit ended up, we ended up raising money yep. from a um, strategic investor in the U.S., uh, and then ultimately we built a team and had an office and, you know, all that eventually sold that company, um, to a NASDAQ listed, one of the biggest, um, retailers in our industry at the right. time. Um, so that, that was sold, uh, at that point. And then I sort of fell into crypto okay. and so that, then <laughs> since then that's where I've landed and crypto, crypto is another world. Right. It's a, the next level up, um, in that so we can yeah we can go deeper into that if you like wow as well. wow well that's a, that's an amazing journey of of so much uh diversity of experiences and and growth opportunities and i, I do want to sit on that whole story just for a few moments and, and unpack some things with you it sounds to me like you're describing a story whereby uh you had dreams and you had goals and you had vision and all the rest of it but but the actual story played out very much as one step at a time uh, one door leads to another, 
deal with what's in your hands right now? And it, w would that be the way you'd describe it for you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, look, I think it's it's a journey, mm. you know, and and in the in the moment, the days the days feel long. Um, but when you look back, you know, you've done a lot, you've come a long way. Yes. Um, I don't feel like it, I think saying all the things that I've just said, you may be watching this and think, oh, this guy has done a lot. He's quite impressive or whatever. I don't feel that, okay. you know, and that maybe is imposter syndrome or, or just the realities of things mm. aren't as glamorous as they sound mm. when you speak them out um, or as glamorous as your LinkedIn profile makes you look, right. you know. So I think it, it is a journey and I'm still on that journey. I don't have all the answers. I don't, you know, I'm, yeah, it, I'm still on the journey. Yes. Wow. It's, as you say, it's, it's definitely a thing, isn't it? Whereby uh, people do look into other people's story and their journey and they appear to have all the career highlights and have it all together, so to speak. But actually when you, you poke it, it's actually really normal behind the scenes. Um, you know, and in a story like yours, many highs, many lows, definitely some great days that you're describing to us there. Also, no doubt some, some dark days. So, I'm wondering if you'd take a moment, maybe pick a story or, or pick a, a season in the journey where for you things were tough and uh, perhaps where many of my listeners and viewers are experiencing where they're trying to battle through things alone, whether it's business or things are tough in their family life or for whatever reason, there's a lot of pressure on them. Uh, I wonder if you could take a moment to pick one of those times or those stories and tell us how tough did it get? How dark did it get? And and in that moment, how did you navigate your way through and out? Yeah, good question. So look, I think it's all a roller coaster. Mm. You know, there's highs and there's lows. Yes. And, you know, for me, it's all about trying to keep, you know, let's say there's a straight line and you you don't want big highs and big lows. Right. You want to kind of be, you know, rolling along. Sure. Um, and that's what I try to do. But inevitably, there are going to be some bigger mm. highs and bigger lows. Yep. And I, I, I've definitely gone through that a few years ago, as an example, and I won't go into like the details of why it happened or anything like that. But I went through a stage where I was having a lot of breathing difficulties. Wow. You know, I would I lay down in the nighttime. Um, and a lot of stress, mm. this is all stress related, yes. so much stress and pressure around this time. And I would lay down in the night and I would feel like someone was sitting on my chest and I couldn't breathe. Mm. I couldn't take a full breath in. And it got to the point where I thought there was something really medically wrong. And so I started getting tests, you know, done. I had a um, gastroscopy because I thought it might have been reflux. I had a bronchoscopy, which was horrible. You know, you're awake and they're sticking imagine. a camera down into your lungs. <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. Um, and I had an asthma challenge test. I did all these different things mm. trying to work out what, was the issue uh, eventually got diagnosed as um, vocal cord dysfunction um, but and I had a bunch of exercises which got me out of that but a lot of the trigger for vocal cord dysfunction is stress related okay. um, and I wasn't sleeping I was I had pills lined up you know I had so many different things I was taking just to try to fall asleep mm. and nothing was working and so that was probably the, the, pretty the dark. darkest that it got that was, you know, seeing a psychologist on antidepressants, you know, all the whole, the whole thing. Um, and, you know, and you, you're on your, you're doing it on your own. And I mean, I've got, got family around sure. me uh, and good friends, but, you know, you got to, you got to figure out how to get through that. I didn't have um, a business partner at the time that I could lean on right. to, to take the load off me either. Yes. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. There's been some tough days for sure. Yeah, and in that season, in that moment where you're having those health challenges and, and there's a lot of confusion, I'm sure, and as you touched on, that begins to weigh on your mental health and sense of hope and all the rest of it. Do, do you feel like in that moment you had uh, clarity around the correlation, this is going on because of the stress I've been under and, and what I'm currently under? Or did you need to come out of that season and look back on it to understand the impact of pushing ahead by yourself was having on you. Yeah, I didn't recognize it in in the immediate. Right. You know, I I felt like I thought it was a medical issue that okay. was going wrong in my body, uh, and it was like a physical, you know, manifestation sure. of the stress. But it, yeah, I think uh, taking a view like as I got through it, 
um, yeah, it was definitely, you know, very stressful period in my life. Mm. And the way that I got through it was really time, okay. you know, and, and obviously, and I had to slow down. Right. I couldn't just keep running at the same pace that I was right. running. I had to recognize, all right, I need to slow down. Um, and time passes by and, and, and it heals itself yes. as well. Um, but you need to give it some time and space in order for it to do that. Yes, for sure. Yeah, interesting. I, what I heard you say there, I know you didn't use this word, but what I heard you say was you were realizing that your sustainability was becoming unviable in, in the sense that you sure. couldn't keep going at the same pace, the same pressure level without some kind of intervention of rest or changing the way you did things. And look, I hear that That's a right. lot. And, and I'm, you know, the, the zone that I exist in really is oriented a lot around that issue of helping leaders and organizations to certainly be effective and reach their goals and all the rest of it, but to do it sustainably. And I, I wanted mm. to get your take on this because I, I know for me, it's one of the challenges that I hear and I listen to either directly or, or indirectly where, um, you know, obviously people are looking for voices online and they're looking for coaches and they want people to follow and that's perfectly fine. But I do wonder about the impact of the mixed messages that come from some of the more popular voices, the guys like the Alex Hormoses and the Gary Vaynerchuks, who, you know, I've got to say, a lot of what they have to offer is fantastic. But the portion yeah. that I worry about is this mantra of go, 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 go until you drop when I probably yes. would advocate for a, a longer term, more sustainable approach that says, no, 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 stop well regularly so that you can keep going well. And I think I, I feel like there needs to be a, a renaissance of sustainability for business owners and people in these solo building modes as opposed to that kind of uh, what I would call like a hero mantra that almost is trying to create trophies about who can have the least amount of sleep and not die. Um, you know, yeah. it's a bit facetious, I realise, but... Hopefully you can pick up the contrast I'm trying to paint there. And I wanted to get your view and perspective on that. How do you feel about all that? Yeah, look, I much respect to those guys, you know, like they're, they're doing, they're doing what they're doing. Um, they're trying to build a following yes. and, and people want to hear that sort of like, you know, motivational sure. um, speech, sure. I guess, that they're giving out and projecting. And, and I'm sure, behind the curtain like there's their own issues going on as well i, expect you know, I so, bet yeah. they're not probably running as hard as they sort of say they are mm. look i think it, at the end of the day it i 100 percent agree with you sustainability is important mm. there are going to be times where things get busy yes. and you have to dig in and work harder than you normally right. would um but it's not sustainable long term mm. you know i built uh uh, my new business that I'm building now in crypto, crypto never sleeps right. and it's so all consuming. Mm. Uh, and I find myself, if I'm let it, and I'm actually not great at this myself, okay. if I let it, it becomes really all consuming. Right. It becomes like on my phone in the night times, first thing I'll do when I wake yes. up is look at, you know, Telegram because I'm managing a community there mm -hmm. and things like that. So it becomes like very all consuming very quickly. Right. Uh, and you can really get down this, you know, start sliding down um, into the pits without without even fully realizing mm. it. Uh, I just come out of a really busy period with my business end of last year because you kind of like when you're building, mm -hmm. you're building. I like the build phase of a new business because right. you're in your cave. No one, you got no expectations from other people. Okay, uh, you can just take your time and enjoy the process. Yes. And you're dreaming. It's like blue sky. There's so many <laughs> possibilities, right. you know. But then you get into a mode where you're actually launching, and then the launching is customers mm. and demands from customers yes. and all that that comes along with it. And I actually went through this phase at the towards the end of last year where I was working from 6 a.m. till midnight every day for weeks wow. on end. Uh, and I've got a seven-month, <laughs> no, I've got a seven-month-old baby. Um, she was sleeping in bed with my wife. I was in her room on a mattress on the floor for weeks doing this just so that I could work that 6 a.m. Wow. to midnight time frame uh, and get that that sort of uh, six, a, six hours of sleep mm -hmm. each night. And it 
to be honest, it just completely wrecked me and burnt me out. Right. So after the launch, was still doing that for a little bit longer. And then it got to the point where um, I, I've only just come out of this recently, but for about two months, I felt like it took me to recover from that really strong, um, you know, sprinting mm, of work. Incredible. You know, and so it's, it's not sustainable. Mm. And it's very easy for people to slip into that, yes. even when you know the knowledge right. that it's not sustainable. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's where having someone like yourself to be accountable to is super important mm. because you just naturally do that yes. because you go, that's, that's my goals. You know, how am I going to achieve that goal? I've got to, we've got to run, run, yeah, run, run, yeah. run. Yep. You know, that's what you get told. And I think it's just, it's a slippery slope yes. and having people that you can trust to be accountable to, I think is extremely helpful in the journey as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the other thing is with these guys, like, they, they're projecting, you know, a hundred, like I know Alex Cormosi, it's all about hundred million dollar, build a hundred million dollar business. Right. And Sounds easy, right? For me, <laughs> yeah. And look, for me, when I was younger, like I would eat that up. Sure. Like I, I want to build a hundred million dollar business. I want to, you know, exit this. I want to, like my goal was to be on the young rich list, right. you know, and which cut off is 40. So I'm almost there and, and I'm not going to do it and I'm not going to do it. Partly, well, maybe I would, I would have never got there anyway, but I, I don't necessarily want that anymore. Right. You know, and I think it's important for people to know their why. Right. You know, why are you doing right. what you're doing? What, and, and that ties into your goals in mm-hmm. life. And what, why does your why need to be the same as Alex Hormozzi's why? It doesn't. Right. You, as you, an individual, you know, person can choose what your why is. Yes. Um, and for me over the years, that's definitely evolved mm. from being all about the money and the possessions mm-hmm. of things. Uh, and these days it's more about the freedom, uh, and, and achieving freedom in my life financially right. so that I can have more experiences, more time with my family yes. and be able to take them, you know, on holidays and have great experiences or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's more freedom oriented than, uh, money oriented. Right. Yeah. Wow. Look. That's amazing. That there's so much to unpack just in that, and we we might have sort of uh, started peeling back the layers of an entire uh, other episode. But um, I think that's going to be so valuable for so many people watching and listening because, as you've said, and we've we've both touched on there, there is a lot of messaging out there, especially to younger people uh, around this idea of all you have to do is push, and if that means you hit the wall, well, so be it. Uh, and it's made out to be so formulaic as if there were no variables, uh, as if there wasn't a super high price to pay. And sometimes that price is a person's physical health or emotional health or mental health or worst of all, all of the above. Um, and I'm not quite sure it's a balanced message. I know that in business, there's not a lot of balance, but I think there needs to be some more balance around this narrative. And seems like you and I are on a similar page that um, sustainability is a better um, flag post to aim ourselves at that we can sure work hard and build and have our goals and dreams and as you alluded to those things can change over time which I, I want to get into that a little more with you but it seems to me as though understanding sustainability especially when you know you're by yourself and it's all on you and you don't quite know what to do it seems to me that if there's a- awareness of sustainability combined with willingness to try and become more sustainable. And then as you wisely pointed out, a trusted advisor of some sort, a mentor or a coach or a person who's got enough experience and skill that's got permission to check in with you and say, are you being sustainable? And and if not, why not? And, And how can we build better strategy together so that you do reach your goals but you don't burn out or blow up along the way. I, I think that truth in your actual experience and your lived story is something that I, I hope can be liberating and and recalibrating for a lot of my listeners and viewers. Um, I, I'd love to hear from you a little bit more about that idea of goals and dreams changing over time with the seasons of your life mm-hmm. and as you've taken on board new learnings. Take us a bit deeper with that. What does that look like for you? Yeah, look, I think when you're young, uh, especially, I mean, old, older people do this as well because it's just human nature is that you want more. Yes. 
you know you and and sometimes when you achieve a goal you just move the goalposts right. and you you want more and right. more and more and and that is human nature yes. so when i was younger and and probably when i say younger like i mean probably up until recently even within the last probably two to three years is yep. where i've changed my mindset okay. significantly around this is that i was always trying to build a really big business right that was my goal you know and and as when you're an entrepreneur or a business owner the you can derive a lot of your self worth out of building a successful mm-hmm. business, and the measure of a successful business is that you are making a lot of money, right? You know, because you have customers, and then you have revenue, yes. and so that that equals success, you know. In and that was always how I viewed mm-hmm. it: is build a big business, make a lot of money, and then obviously, you know, you can buy the dream home, you can sure. buy a nice car, you could buy a boat, and all these silly things that. Uh, um, material things that don't actually add to your happiness in right. life. And so I kind of recognized that a few years ago okay. that I felt like I was always chasing this elusive, uh, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Right. And, you know, even though I've sold companies and, and whatever, it still felt like that, like I didn't sell them for massive amounts of money, like life-changing money. Mm-hmm. You know, you can sell a company. When you sell something, some people say I sell a company and you don't know how much they sold it for. And, you know, some people like to say new shoes, uh, new car, new house, new life. Right. You know, it, which sort of, which four bucket do you fit <laughs> okay. into, you know? So, yeah. and and I think that, I yeah, I was always chasing this dollar and I feel like it was always elusive mm. for me. And it was almost there but i couldn't unlock it and then that constant living in the future mm. uh where i would ruminate on if i'm successful then i can do this right. and that that always living in the future actually made me unhappy okay because i wasn't happy with what i had right. now in the present uh and i and to be honest i just got sick of that mm. and i started recognizing that in myself right. that i'm not present in my day-to-day life or enjoying my day-to-day wow. life because I'm so future oriented. Mm. Uh, and I think that a lot of entrepreneurs can fall into that Definitely. trap of always thinking about the future because that's kind of what we are. We, we, we imagine a different future yes. for ourselves and our business and what the world would look like if our business is successful. Right. You know, so it is a normal, natural thing. But for me, it just became something that I didn't want to chase anymore. Okay. I didn't want to chase the money anymore. I wanted that freedom. And so. The business that I'm in today was actually I, I'm in crypt, so I'm in the crypto industry yeah. now, um, and I the reason I chose the crypto industry is actually not because I want to build a long, massive, huge, long term business in it, mm-hmm. but actually I saw an opportunity within crypto to make you know a decent amount of money quickly, yes, uh, and then I can reinvest that into you know another business that i want to do more long term right. and create sort of that freedom that i've been sure. looking for uh, and so you know the last two years for me has been all about working towards uh trying to get um this goal that i had mm-hmm. um and once i achieve that then i can go and do some other things as well and so i actually the start of last year started talking to a bunch of people trying to keep myself accountable and saying to them if i don't achieve my goal mm-hmm. uh, by the end of this year uh, then i'm actually going to have a break from business completely wow um and i'm going to go do something else and i didn't know what that was i didn't know if i was going to go work for another tech company okay. or even just go back and do some casual teaching for sure. a bit because i just felt so tired and burnt out by the whole right. uh, business experience and so I told that to a few people in order to keep myself accountable because I didn't want to get to the end of the year, not have achieved my goal Mm -hmm. and still keep doing the same thing and making the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, So it turns out I did achieve my goal at the end of last year after all the 6 a.m. till midnight and, you know, launched this thing and made a bunch of money and, you know, that that was great. Um, But And then now this year I have, you know, new goals Mm -hmm. and, and new things that I'm chasing after. But it's not money oriented. It's it's about you know I, I write my goals each year. I go mm-hmm. away uh, for a night away. So Peppers in Sutton Forest. That's where I, okay. I go for my <laughs> we'll little getaways you. and do yeah. a one night stay <laughs> on my own yep. uh, by the nice fireplace there. Yes. And 
I start planning planning my year. And my my year goal was pretty much around enjoying the journey wow. and how can I optimize my working mm-hmm. life to enjoy the journey more than yes. I have been in the past. Yeah, got you. Wow. See, I've got to say, um, as someone who lives in the mentoring and consulting space as I do, I love so much of what you just said there. Um, I think I'm probably going to share this video with so many of my existing clients and others in the future because I, I really love what I heard when you said you were willing and courageous to take an honest look internally. Um, of course, it's easy to look externally and you count your numbers and you do metrics and you go, have I got the house? And you look at your bank balance and there's nothing wrong with looking at those things. But what a lot of people will not do for lack of courage and insecurity and all kinds of fears, they won't look internally. But I heard you say very clearly that you did look internally and you you were able to say to yourself, you know what, actually, I'm not happy with the way I'm doing my life. This is this is not creating the result. My A plus B is not equaling C. It's coming up with something that I really don't enjoy. And so I, I heard you say you had the self-awareness, which is huge. I, I wish I could educate the whole world on their self-awareness muscle. That's massive. And then secondly, you had the courage uh, to do something about it, to actually commit and say, I'm going to change some things internally, externally, in my diary, in my thinking, and then you, the ultimate where you went and spoke to some trusted friends and you you put a positive peer pressure on yourself to put it out there, as it were, and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm making changes. So, yeah, I look, I love a lot about what you've just said there in that last little section. And there's so many people listening and watching who could really learn something from that, which is to not fear making changes and, and don't be afraid to let go of some old goals that you might have bonded yourself to because life yeah. changes, right? And seasons change. And maybe the goals you've got today belong to a younger, more naive version of yourself. And it's time to upgrade the goals, not more money, more boats, more houses, uh, more money, more problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe not that kind (laughs) of upgrade, but an upgrade in the thinking where we say, perhaps because I have entered a new phase of my life, I need my goals and my aspirations to mature as well. Is all of that fair for what went on internally for you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that it's so easy to fall into that trap of adopting other people's um, goals and mindsets. Right. And I think you just need to look inwardly Mm -hmm. and and talk to your spouse and 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 make collective goals around what you actually want in life. Right. Uh, And yeah, it doesn't have to be all about money. Mm -hmm. Money doesn't bring you happiness past a certain point. Right. You know, like they say, um, money doesn't solve all your problems, but it solves all your money problems. Right. You know, so there is a necessity for money in this world. and money is like the cause of a lot of stress in people's, yes. you know, life and relationships and things like that. And so you do need money. It's not, you shouldn't like not care about money and how to manage mm. your finances and things like that. But there is a point where it doesn't actually make your life any better. Right. Um, there's this thing called the freedom line. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you get past this freedom line, which is a certain amount of money, uh, it actually has no material you know, difference in your life in terms of your right. happiness. Level. Right. Um, and I think that people just need to keep that in mind. And the freedom line for every, is different for everyone. Sure. So, and again, you look inwardly, what's your freedom line? What do you need? And it's different depending on your age mm-hmm. and, and what you want out of life. Like, obviously, if you're still happy to keep working, then your freedom line is different to someone that wants to retire and never work again. Yes. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's all a personal choice yes and people have the power to choose that they don't have to adopt what everyone else says they should do yeah absolutely look i really hope and i'm confident that the conversation we're having potentially can be rivers of gold as it were particularly for younger minds or or even for people who are not so young but maybe young in a certain chapter of their journey or Maybe they've been stuck in the place where they are for a long time. I feel like there's so much people can glean from your story and the experiences and the changes you've made. Uh, I I do want to ask you one more question before we run out of time, and and I want to try and fashion into the question a couple of things that I've heard you say in our conversation today. And it's along the lines of 
uh, advice or wisdom to young entrepreneurs, not necessarily young by age, as I said, but young in their their business journey or even young in their current season, um, is two of the top things uh, that I heard you say, some of the greatest advice you could pass on, which is I heard you say people need to know their why. Why are you getting up to do the stuff you're doing? You know, why are you paying this price, knowing your why? And then secondly, uh, availing yourself of someone skilled and experienced to talk to on the journey. Are those two things as important as anything else you'd advise people or would you throw other things in as well? Yeah, I'd probably throw a couple more in, but I think that that's they're probably the, the two biggest ones. Right. I think that obviously knowing your why is important mm-hmm. as we've just discussed yes. and it's your why, not someone else's yes. why. I think setting clear goals for your life mm. around your why. Right. You know, you need to know what you're pointing towards. Yes. Uh, and setting goals is a great way to do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the worst days that I have are the days that I've procrastinated and done not much work because I just feel like I've what I've wasted my day. Yes. You know, and, and the, the way that you, you know, kill procrastination is to have clear goals mm-hmm. and set deadlines around those goals for yourself. Because when you're working solo, you don't have accountability. You, you are your own boss. You make the decisions. Yes. Like for me, I can get up whatever time I want, finish work whenever I want to, whatever I want during the day. But if I don't sit at my computer and actually get some work done, mm-hmm. I'm not going to make any money. Right. So setting clear goals uh, uh, is is important. Yes. Um, I think um, creating good, like being disciplined in your life, mm-hmm. and and having um and ha- creating good habits in your life. Yes. You know, not sleeping in to ridiculous hours. Um, making sure you're getting exercise in. Making sure you're eating healthy and clean. Um, all these things can add up and 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 give you those little one percenters that make you better yes. uh, and you feel good and you feel you, you know feel more energized mm. and things like that to tackle it all i think if you are lazy and you know you just have this um whatever attitude mm-hmm. you, you just you won't achieve anything right. but you also feel terrible yes. in the process of doing that but then lastly yeah getting around people um that you can trust mm-hmm. and also not only trust but people that have walked in your shoes right. before right right um, I think that's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. If you have, have a friend or someone that you can go to um, or a mentor coach, you, you want to know that that person knows the journey that you've been right. on and has walked it themselves. Yes. Um, because if they haven't, then whatever they say to you, they may even be saying the right things, mm-hmm. but you're not going to trust mm. what they're saying is true. Okay. Um, so getting around people, whether that's, you know, for me when I was younger, it was going to meetups, mm-hmm. um, going to different entrepreneurial events to, and building connections with other like-minded entrepreneurs that were in the startup yes. space. Um, and, you know, hopefully one day you find someone that you can fully trust that's going to have open two-way conversation with each other where what I mean by that is they're open with you and you're open with them. Yes. Uh, and then that creates like a really strong relationship mm-hmm. where you can – um, you really go on the journey together, even though you're running separate races. Yeah. Um, and for me, that's really been a big part of in my life as well, having yes. that person. Yeah, brilliant. Great advice. Really great advice. Really helpful. I think the whole conversation today has been helpful and I'm certain that people watching and listening will be able to get so much from your experiences, your story and the way that you've packaged that and all the stuff that we're sort of uh, unfolding here together. Brilliant. I, I will make sure that in our show notes and our description today that people can check out your story and follow you and be involved in whatever level they want to be in. Uh, thanks so much for being on the show. It's been fantastic. Cool. No worries. Thanks for having me, Andrew. There he was, Jonathan Peacock, uh, a man with vast experience in business and, and certainly someone who's got plenty to say on this subject of what to do when it's all on you. I want you to make sure that you check out the links in the show notes and in the description. Make sure you're following along. You can subscribe to my weekly newsletter, follow the YouTube channels, connect with me on the socials, and we can stay in touch in that way. And hopefully what you're hearing on this channel and other formats will help you in your journey, especially as you try to figure out what to do when it's all on you. That's all we've got time for in this episode. Until next time, bye for now.